Hi, welcome to my review of the LG 40 UB8000 4K television, also known as the 40 UB800T in the EU and down under. And you've probably seen this on the web if you've been looking for this TV. It looks like this, and it looks like this, and I'm not really going to show more pictures of that because we're really going to do two things in this video. Because other videos have focused on gaming and overall impressions and have generally said this is a great TV for gaming at 4K for the cost and I fully agree with uh, those impressions the other reviewers have done and there's visit those, they're good reviews, they helped me get this TV in the end and um, my only question I really had was about use as, uh, um, as a PC monitor for text quality and whether that was going to be sufficient to replace my current uh, QHD monitor which is 2560 by 14 by 1600 in my case which is great for text and uh, general productivity use so we'll look at that and then um, have some overall impressions versus a, um, a 30 to 40 inch IPS uh, monitor QHD that is or even versus the cost wise of a IPS 4k uh, monitor or TV um, which obviously costs more. And what you're seeing right now is Unigen Valley recorded at 4K using NVIDIA Shadowplay, giving me about 30 to 40 FPS with no AA and ultra settings still at 3840 by 2160. So keep in mind that these displays are graphically intensive. They do require powerful video cards. And right now I'm running a 980 overclock to almost 1500 uh, megahertz um, on the core clock and I didn't have to touch the memory anyway it's the EVGA super clock version which um, with the boost goes quite well some games run fine at, at almost 60 FPS but you get Far Cry in there and it's running at 30 to 40 with a single card so yeah eventually SLI is needed okay some facts about this TV um, obviously it's a slim bezel nice design it can be v, uh, VESA mounted at 200 millimeter by 200 millimeter, which is a good thing for me because I prefer that. Um, I, I like the clean look of a VESA mount and you can swing it around. And interestingly enough though, it's no longer sold by LG and is out of stock in many stores in Canada. It's been discontinued because it is a 2014 version. And in fact, when I check um, LG's sites, this TV has been replaced, although they list it, I, I don't think they sell it. It's being replaced by all IPS displays of 43 inches and larger. So if you go down, I live in Canada, if you go down and go to Costco or Best Buy or other stores, you won't find this TV for sale anymore. You have to look around for it from other, um, maybe on Kijiji or eBay or so forth um, to get um, some idea of where you could purchase it perhaps uh, used. In fact, mine was an open box uh, purchase because I couldn't find it in any of the box stores. This is a 39.5 inch 4K display at either 3840 by 2160 or 4096 by 2160 at 60 hertz via the HDMI 2.0 port of which there are three and one is an HDCP port which is your copyright um, protection protocol, um, high definition copyright protection protocol and uh, that's useful if you're having Blu-ray, uh, want to use Blu-ray and other, other copyrighted materials. And it's HEVC, that's, uh, uh, I always forget which HEVC is, but it's um, more or less will decode and stream current 4K content. Um, high efficiency or, uh, um, I always, uh, anyway, it's not important. It's uh, more or less allows you to um, stream 4K content from Netflix and things. So it's compliant, so it'll do that. So this is a smart TV via wired or wireless connection. It's not an IPS panel. Uh, the panel type to me, I couldn't find out. Um, it's likely not a TN panel though. Uh, I, I think it's got really good color uh, reproduction when I compare it to my IPS panel, my 30 inch Yamakasi, which is basically an LG panel, um, similar to the Apple Cinema 30 inch. And the side angle viewing is very good too. So it's a little bit, it's be if it is a TN panel, it's very good. Uh, if not, it's a uh, uh, PAV or VA panel, uh, I don't know, but it, it's, its color is good and its side angles are good. Now importantly, this TV supports only 420 chroma, likely at 8-bit at 60Hz. So 
what does that mean? Um, well, it means it's basically the color sampling is downgraded from, uh, um, I guess, what you might call the gold standard of 444 chroma, which at, at 10 bit panels, such as my Yamakasi or other nice IPS 3 inch panels, um, basically that means you're, you're not sampling the RGB equally at 444 uh, sampling rate. So it's not going to re reproduce the color quality of an IPS panel. However, it comes, in my opinion, it comes pretty damn close. And the real question is, is it noticeable and do you care? Um, so that's something you'll have to determine for yourself. My impression is that in, during gaming, this is not a huge issue for me. Um, when I look at Far Cry, I, it looks gorgeous and I'm pretty happy with the content. What is important here though is that 420 is required for a TV such as this, because it is a TV, um, because the lag, uh, if it was a 444 um, at 60 hertz uh, 4K, this would require a lot of bandwidth and is likely not doable on an HDMI 2. I think it saturates the, the bandwidth of, of the port. I think only DisplayPort version 1.2 is capable of doing that. And so that's why this TV and many others like it are 420 Chroma to be able to reduce the input lag at 4K at 60 Hertz. So this is actually a good thing for response time and lag in the monitor. However, you will lose some, um, some color fidelity, well, let's just say, because the sampling rate's lower. From what I can tell, finally, LG models 6300 and higher are IPS panels. In fact, when actually ignore that 6300, uh, they're all IPS panels from what I can see now, and they all cost more. Um, but the important point is here that they may not be 60 hertz via the HDMI 2. In fact, when you look at the specs on the LG site, um, they, they say they're 60 hertz via the, um, the video uh, decoder, the HEVC decoder for streaming, but they don't actually say it's HDMI 2. So if you connect this to your uh, PC, I'm not sure, it's uncertain whether you will get 60 hertz or whether it's back to 30. Um, so that's something you want to check or verify if you're going to get an IPS LG um, display. So check the model number, check the forums. There's not much information out there on the, on the newer versions, the 2015 models, the IPS models right now because they're rather expensive. Um, so anyway, that's a, just a word of caution. And just the final thing here is that I was able to buy this monitor, this 40 inch uh, UB8000 for $500 before taxes and shipping in Canada, which I think is an absolute steal because this allows me to get in and test the 4K market and test what I need for um, video card requirements and test the response rate of games, test the immersion of a larger display versus my 30 inch IPS display. And yes, it is, I, qu I quite honestly say the detail is amazing and uh, that is useful. I've only really looked at Far Cry so far, playing really in isolation. Uh, that's not so graphically intense. So, uh, but Far Cry looks amazing and it is quite immersive. So, um, yeah, that's all I wanted to say about some of the facts of it. Now let's get on to the real meat of this, um, which is really about the text quality and the settings I have chosen from what I, from qualitatively, what I feel uh, looks the best to me. Um, and you may like it because I am kind of setting this up for more of um, productivity and gaming use, so a balance in between the two. So uh, with that said, uh, we'll move on to some uh, uh, recordings of uh, text quality up close using a high definition camera. So first we have some settings. <clears throat> I like to use the 200% uh, percent by default and I think it gives the best balance between screen size and real estate and um, text quality. Overall, I'm very impressed with the text quality on this monitor. It really actually is very good for a non-IPS monitor. And you can see some of the uh, close-ups here using the uh, Windows text adjustment tool, if you will. Just some of the icons in Windows. 
again they reproduce quite well at 200 percent as you shrink down the scaling the text becomes a little bit more fragmented I found it looked the most solid at 200 percent versus say 150 and certainly at 100 inbox in uh, Windows Mail looks good in this case my junk mail Steam looks pretty good. I wouldn't say it's a hundred. It's great. You can see there's a little bit of um, line break in the text, but it overall it's it's pretty good. And of course, color looks great. And um, yeah, it's it's not bad. Not all websites look great. Uh, it really depends. And then the desktop itself, the icons and text looks good. It's solid, colors great. I really can't complain about um, that. So again, um, at 200%, I'm very impressed with the text quality. And now we'll show you a few um, color settings I've chosen for the TV uh, to see um, whether that's going to work for you or not. Okay, some color settings for you or general settings backlight down contrast down brightness down sharpness practically off, well off at zero color uh, decreased to 60 I think it's standard at 70 when it comes in default tint is in the green for my liking anyway uh, color temp is practically neutral and that's all I've changed I haven't done in some of these advanced uh, calibration where you can use a run a wizard to get a calibration so play with that if you like and have fun. So my impressions overall is that this is a great TV as a PC monitor. I'm really impressed with the color and text quality which I didn't expect to be as good as it is. It's not quite IPS quality for text. I, I, I definitely acknowledge that but it's pretty close maybe 80 to 90 percent. Uh, take some time to set this up right for your needs. It, it, it deserves it. Um, and if you can buy this TV right now, I would suggest you go get one, particularly if you're a gamer. Buy a good powerful video card or two uh, as well because you might want one of those. I did say I would have a few impressions on uh, versus an IPS monitor. And I think that versus an IPS monitor, this is a good buy. I think given that an IPS 34 inch uh, from the distributors out there are one half to one third uh, sorry, uh, two, two times or three times the cost of this uh, $500 monitor. It's it's a, a sure deal. I think if you must have IPS for um, color, uh, better, slightly better color reproduction as well as text reproduction, I would go get one for sure. Um, if you're a heavy gamer, I don't think you'll notice the difference um, in gaming. And the text quality is quite good. So even as a day-to-day -day use, um, it's highly recommended. So thank you for tuning into a long uh, winded video perhaps, um, but I think it deserved it. And um, if you can get one of these monitors, go get it. Thank you very much and we'll uh, look forward to uh, posted comments.